Okay, so here's a problem. Uh, we've got a simple supported section and a little cantilever section here. Uh, all of the values are the same, and I'm looking for the moment at C. So I want to find the bending moment at C as my unit load or a live load varies across the structure. So we've had this conversation before. Let's have it again. Uh, I'm going to now cut the structure at C, and I need to kind of think about ahead, do I want to work the left side or the right side? Right side. You want to do the right side this time? Really? You want to do that? We can. I don't know. It just looks like the left over there. Well, one good thing about I mean, right no, now they're pretty much the same. You'll just be worried about the moment with one force. But the, the left side will be easier because all the dimensions will just be x, whereas these over here are going to be like 15 minus x and 10 minus x. It's just a little more uh, accounting to do. So I'm going to suggest that we do the left side. Sorry. Mr. Rippey, I said choose and I didn't let you choose. I was wrong on the right side of my It's kind of like politics. We give you the illusion of making a difference, but you really don't. Especially in this state. So, if I go to the left side, I want the reaction at A. So I need to find the reaction at A. As my unit load, which I'll draw in our favorite color, orange. <coughs> and that's a distance x. So how do I find my reaction at A? Sounds like a great idea, so let's do that. We'll sum moments about B. I'll use right-hand rule for my sign convention, and we'll make sure everything's in equilibrium. So about B... What's the distance to my unit load? Well, this total distance between A and B is 10. The distance uh, from A to the unit load is X, so it should be 10 minus X. And that, in this configuration, looks like it creates positive moments, so it'll be 1 times 10 minus X. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what happens when the unit load goes over here and it's creating now negative moment? Well, it's handled by this right here because this will become negative, right? When x is greater than 10, the moment arm now is saying it's a negative moment arm to the right, and that'll. So this expression will take care of the sign and the value of the moment about b for our unit load. What about the reaction at a? Is that positive or negative bending moment? Negative. negative. And that has a moment arm of 10. So our reaction at A is going to be 1 minus x over 10, I believe. I do that right? I just move this term to the other side and divide by 10. I think that's correct. So it says the reaction at A when I'm at x equals 0, which means I'm right here with my unit load, the reaction is equal to 1. And as I move away, it decreases. When I'm at b, x equal to 10, it's 0. And as I move out on the cantilever, it actually changes sign and becomes negative. And we've talked about that before. You, about b now, you've got kind of a seesaw action going. So if I'm pushing down here, I better be pulling down the other end to match it. So that looks good. So now I will draw my free body diagram for that right hand side which is 5 feet uh, I'm looking for the moment so I'll assume positive bending moment at C and I'll also put on my reaction at A which we found to be 1 minus X over 10 and I will consider the first case where my unit load at some position x is on the structure. So this will be when the position of the unit load is between 0 and 5. So it's, it's on the free body. So how do I find 
How do I find my reaction? I mean, my moment at C. You've done this a few times. You just sum the moments at the the cut, right? So I'll use right hand rule, and we will sum the moments at the cut. So what's the moment at C with my sign convention? It's positive, right? Yeah. Now. The unit load 1 creates what kind of moment about C? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. And what is the moment arm? Uh, minus X minus, uh, minus X. Yeah, X is the distance from the left to the... So this little piece here would be 5 minus X. And then I have my reaction, which creates negative moment. And that'll be 1 minus X over 10... And that'll have a moment arm of 5. So I've got to solve for my moment. Let's see what I've got here. Uh, I've got positive 5 and I've got negative 5. Those seem to cancel. I've got uh, negative x and I've got positive 5x over 10. So that should be, what would that be? Uh, uh, and I throw everything the other side. It looks like it's going to be x over two. No, I was. did I do that too fast? Well, it looks like uh, this five and that cancel. So this term is left with uh, negative x, and this term is left with positive x over two. You see that? So this ends up with a negative x over 2, but when I throw it to the other side of the equation, it becomes positive x over 2. Did I do that right? What happened to the negative x that was stacked on the left? This piece here, when you multiply 5 times x over 10, you get... You get uh, x over 2 yes. and the minus and the minus make it positive. Yes. And this one is just 1 times negative x, negative x. So you add that together, you get negative x over 2, but you have to move it to the other side of the equation oh, to balance it. So now we need to do it again, except now we want our unit load to be somewhere between 5 and 15. So I draw the same free body, except it has one component, well, no longer has one component. I still have the reaction at A. I still have the moment that I'm looking for at C. But you'll notice that now the position of the unit load, since it's between 5 and 15, that's here, it's not on the, the left-hand free body. So in a similar manner that we did before, we will sum the moments at the cut, which is point C. And what do we have? We have positive moment, MC. We have a negative moment created by the reaction, which is 1 minus X over 10, and has a moment arm of 5. Oh, I did leave out that this was 5 feet. So when I solve for the moment at C... It looks like I get um, 5 minus x over 2. Does that look okay? Can I, I just do a question right here? Yeah. All right. When we were writing function of the next word, analyzing the beam, we had to break the segments up at each reaction. Here we're just breaking it up at C, but we don't have to break it up at this reaction where the B is. Like we don't have to do from zero to five. Now remember for the influence line, we're, we're just looking for the moment at C. So the only thing we care about is the moment at C. So that's why when I cut the structure, it's always the moment at C. What's the only thing that's moving? The live load. It's varying here when it's between 0 and 5, and when it's between 5 and 15, it's off this free body and it's operating over here. 
I'm still just looking at the moment at C. Okay. That's the part you have to kind of think about. Remember, it's not a shear force and not a bending moment diagram. It's an influence line. So you want the value at a specific point as the load moves. So now if I plot that, let's see what it looks like. So I want the moment at C uh, for this structure. I'll go ahead and mark off these important points. So from zero to five, I have a value of x over two. So I know at zero, at zero, and at five, it would have a value of five over two. Now from five to 15, I have to plot this equation. So I plug in x equal five here, and you get five minus five over two, you get five over two. So that means it matches, it should. And as I move to the right, uh, at x equal 10, I get zero. And at x equal 15, I get, oh, went overstate my welcome there a bit. I get minus five over two. So again, this is the moment at C as the unit load moves. So when the unit load is right here at A, I create no moment at C. As I move towards C from the left side, the moment goes up to two and a half times my weight. So if I were a thousand pounds, this would be two and a half thousand, well, 2,500 uh, pound feet of moment. Now as I start to move away and I stand over here at B, I'm creating no moment at C. As I go out on the cantilever, ooh, the moment increases, but now it's a negative moment. So the moment at C, if you made this out of steel, you'd have to design it for a positive moment and a negative moment. That's no problem with steel. But with concrete, that's a bit of a challenge. If this is a concrete beam, and again, this, is, this moving load is the axle of a truck or some other kind of moving load, then at C, I've got to worry about a positive moment and a negative moment. So I'd have to have both steel in the top and bottom of my beam to be able to handle that because of the cantilever. But only in those sections you wouldn't have to put it throughout the whole thing. Right? Well, this is only point C is the only point that I know about right now. Oh. If I wanted to pick a different point, if I say, well, what is it right here? Well, then I have to redraw my influence line for the moment at this point. So technically, there are an infinite number of influence lines for a beam one at every possible point you can think of. But we do know there are certain critical points. So we can go right for those. Usually in a span like this, the middle point is where a lot of the maximum moment's gonna occur. So it's not uncommon to look for the influence line here in the middle. So any questions about that? All right.